Madam Deputy Speaker, just five days before the US Senate was attacked, they came together to approve a resolution co-sponsored by 20 senators from both parties, from Marco Rubio to Cory Brooker. And the, it was about this, about the brutal campaign of subjugation by the French-speaking government in Cameroon against the country's English-speaking minority. The Senate resolution condemned with great force the atrocities committed by the Anglophone separatist militias, and it speaks with equal power about the actions of the Cameroon government, including, I quote, torture and sexual abuse, massacres and burnings of villages, use of live ammunition against protesters, arbitrary arrests and unlawful de detention, forced disappearance and deaths in custody, attacks on journalists and the regular killing of civilians, including women, children and the elderly. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Senate resolution noted approvingly that exactly one year before, the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, remember this is Donald Trump's trade representative, the direct counterpart of the Secretary of State for International Trade, had terminated Cameroon's access to preferential trade rights due, I quote, to persistent gross violations of internationally recognized human rights. And finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, in that same spirit, the Senate resolution urged members of the international community to join the United States in a strategic collective effort to put pressure on the government of Cameroon, including through, I quote, the use of all available diplomatic and punitive tools. And I quote that Senate resolution at length, Madam Deputy Speaker, because I believe that we must ask ourselves what on earth those senators would think if they knew that on that very same day, when they were unanimously passing those strong words of condemnation towards the government of Cameroon and urging the international community to join them, here in the United Kingdom, we were bringing into effect a brand new continuity trade agreement with Cameroon, a trade deal which was agreed by ministers, apparently with no consideration and clearly no concern for the persistent gross violations of international human rights that are taking place inside Cameroon, a trade deal which none of us in this House, bar the ministers on the bench opposite, have even been allowed to read, let alone debate or approve, and a trade deal which may or may not contain provisions on human rights, but until the government finally decides to publish it, we, the elected members of this Parliament, simply cannot know. I hope that members on all sides will keep the example of Cameroon in mind and consider the words of the US Senate and the actions of the US Trade Representative when judging how to vote later on. Because we all know that on occasions like this, when amendments are up for debate, ministers will try to persuade us that no, they don't disagree with the good intentions behind them and they just don't think that they're really required. However, if that is what ministers are saying today in relation to amendments 2 and 3 on human rights or 1 and 5 on parliamentary scrutiny, I would only ask members to remember Cameroon, a trade deal done with a regime which is slaughtering women and children just because they live in English-speaking towns, a trade deal done in the face of the US Senate on the same day that they call for international support and a trade deal which, incredibly, has still not been laid before Parliament almost three weeks after it came into force. I would urge all members to think about the Cameroon deal and how little consideration ministers gave either to human rights or to the rights of this Parliament when they decided to sign it. And then finally, ask yourself and ask your conscience whether you accept what those same ministers are saying when they go through the amendments before us today and tell you they're not really required. Yeah, yeah, yeah.